Uh, my name is Yang Wang, and this is my colleague Boris. Today we are going to talk about Conveyor, a tool Meta has built to deploy software systems. Meta needs to deploy new versions of software to production for multiple purposes, including deploying new features, fixed boxes, and patching security vulnerabilities. Today, Conveyor is managing the deployments of all services in Meta. With the help of Conveyor, about 30,000 services are making about 400,000 deployments per week to millions of hosts. Since a long time ago, Meta has been encouraging a culture called release early, or release often, because it brings so many benefits. So first, it, it ensures timely deployments of bug fixes. Some of you probably still remember this famous 2014 Facebook outage, which actually caused many people to call 911. An internal investigation showed that uh, the bug was actually found and fixed two months before the outage. But somehow, the patch was never deployed. From this incident, we learned that it is not sufficient to simply encourage a culture. Instead, we need a tool to enforce that. Second, frequent deployments also enables early A-B testing for new features. In Meta, developers frequently need to answer questions like, Will this new feature help to improve user engagement? And to answer the question, they need to deploy this feature to a small number of users and then compile the behaviors of the users with and without this new feature. As one can imagine, frequent deployments will help the developers to get answers more quickly. Finally, frequent deployments also help to reduce troubleshooting effort, because with frequent deployments, each deployment only contains a few changes. For example, the front fast service, which is uh, Meta's front end uh, function as a service platform, is one of the largest services in Meta, and it has more than 10,000 developers contributing to its source code. In the past, it is deployed every week, and every deployment looks like a rocket launch mission during which hundreds of developers who have contributed to the change must gather together to closely watch the progress and fix any potential issues. Today, it is deployed every three hours, and it becomes much more casual. However, although frequent deployments bring so many benefits, it also brings many challenges. For example, with frequent deployments, bugs and failures must be handled almost without any human intervention. And we also need to ensure that each deployment can finish in time. And lastly, we also need to minimize the cost associated with deployments, because such costs will be magnified by the frequency of deployments. To give one concrete example, let's see how front-fast deployment works. So first, to balance safety and speed, front-fast incorporates a phased deployment strategy. So in the first phase, it deploys to servers that correspond to only meta traffic. Uh, then, if everything is fine, it is further deployed to servers that correspond to 2% uh, of production traffic. And finally, it is deployed to all servers. Such a strategy assumes that a bug can be caught in the early phase, and thus will not affect too many users. And then, if we take a closer look at each phase, in each phase, Front fast actually deploy multiple versions to compile their performance, and may promote the better version to the next stable version. And then if we take a further look at the deployment of each version, it actually includes multiple kinds of automated tests and health checks to make sure to prevent buggy releases. Okay. As one can imagine, different services may use very different strategies based on their requirement. However, one thing we learned over time is that despite the diversity across services, it is unsustainable to maintain multiple customer tools because each of them requires continuous investment uh, to develop new features, to improve reliability and scalability, and even to train developers to use them. Therefore, since the beginning of the career project, we set our goal to develop a single deployment tool to cover all the services. Today, with nine years of deployment uh, and development, Conveyor has achieved its goal of universal coverage. It has helped to us to improve the adoption rate of fully automated deployment 
from 12% to 97%. And every week, it's automated tests and health checks help to prevent over 40,000 buggy releases. And finally, it enables a number of important company-wide policies, such as each software must be updated at least once a month. Okay. Now, in the rest of the talk, I will first uh, briefly talk about the ecosystem, and then I will have time to talk about one technique in detail. Now, for example, suppose we have a sharded and replicated key value store. Uh, let's say we have six shards, and each with three replicas. So those 18 replicas in total, let's say it's distributed to six processes. In Meta, we call each process a task, and all the tasks of a service become a job. Now in Meta, those tasks do not run directly on bare metal machines. Instead, they are managed by a cluster manager called Twine, uh, whose role is similar to Kubernetes, if you are more familiar with that. Then above the cluster manager, Conveyor is orchestrating the deployments. Internally, it maintains a pipeline to record all the steps. For example, for our simple key value store, the pipeline may take the new version of the code as the input, build the code into an image, and then deploy the image by sending commands to the cluster manager. Okay, now with this whole ecosystem in mind, let's talk about one core question about software deployment. How to safely update a task to the new version? Okay. In general, there are two broad solutions. The first one, mirroring update, it deploys the new version of the code image to a copy of the tasks. Then it gradually redirects user traffic from the old tasks to the new ones. And finally, it shuts down the old ones. It is also called blue-green deployment industry. Uh, this approach has the advantage that if something goes wrong in the middle, it can quickly roll back to the old version. However, it doubles the cost of deployment and it further needs data copy for stateful services like our key value store, which can be quite expensive. On the other hand, the in-place update approach reboots a task with the new image directly on the same host. It has a lower cost, it does not need to do data copy, but as one can imagine, safety becomes more of a concern for this approach. Meta has adopted in-place update uh, since the first day because of its lower cost. And it has implemented multiple mechanisms in its cluster manager to improve the safety of this approach. Among them, one of the important ones is called pluggable task control. It is motivated by the fact that for safety concerns, uh, several services have constraints about which tasks can be updated. For example, our key value store may require that no shard should lose two replicas simultaneously because that may break the quorum of replication. So in our key ecosystem, the key question is uh, who should implement this? We don't want to implement such policies in the cluster manager or conveyor because those policies are application specific. On the other hand, we also don't want the application to implement all of those because applications do not manage the update. So our solution is to insert a pluggable task controller between the application and the cluster manager. It works as follows. Now in the first st step, Conveyor sends a command to the cluster manager saying, I want to update all the tasks of the key value store. The cluster manager sends a query to the key value store's task controller asking, can I do that? Of course, here the answer is no, because that will break all the quorums. So the task controller applies its application-specific knowledge to find that, in this case, updating T1 and T4 is fine, because that will not cause any shard to lose two replicas. Then the cluster manager follows the instruction to update T1 and T4. Then in the next round, the cluster manager asks the task controller's suggestion about the remaining tasks. While this whole workflow may look uh, not so complex, it actually demonstrates a principle we have applied throughout the design of Conveyor, separate of concerns. Basically, this principle says that Conveyor should only adjust the deployment without worrying about how to update tasks. 
And the cluster manager is the one who is responsible for all the low-level details about how to update tasks and how to manage their life cycles. And finally, the application only needs to determine which tasks can be updated safely. Such a separation uh, makes sure that the developers of each system can focus their own, their own tasks. Now next, my colleague Boris will tell you more about the conveyor design and the rest. design of the conveyor system. So conveyor consists of a set of stateless services that share a sharded database. This database stores all the information conveyor needs in order to orchestrate deployments. Of course, the first step to orchestrate deployments is to find new artifacts. And this is a job of a service called Release Creator. It periodically scans all the pipelines from the database and tries to find new artifacts that need to be deployed. Of course, Conveyor deploys all kinds of artifacts, code, configuration, ML models, and so on. And so we have an abstraction called Artifact Finder, which allows us to find the latest artifacts to be deployed for each artifact type. Once we find new artifacts, we, save it, we create a release and save it to a database. Now that we have the release, we need to execute it. This is where our next service, Run Scheduler, comes in. It scans periodically through all the active releases and tries to figure out the next action that should be executed for each release. Once it figures out the next action that should be done, it contacts another service called Run Manager that orchestrates the actual action. And the action can be anything. It can be build, test, deploy, and so on. One interesting thing we had to think about when designing Conveyor is the circular dependency between Conveyor and our cluster manager. So Conveyor consists of a set of services that are managed by our cluster manager. However, this set of services also is being continuously deployed by Conveyor itself. So Conveyor deploys new versions of Conveyor all the time. On the other hand, our cluster manager consists of a set of services that are managed by itself and this set of services is deployed continuously by conveyor. So this circular dependency represents like some challenges when something goes wrong. So when conveyor is down, the situation is a bit easier because we can just manually go and directly contact cluster manager and spawn a new healthy instances of conveyor. However, when con cluster manager is down, the situation is a bit more tricky. In order to enable cluster manager to manage itself, we implement a multi-layer approach. At the bottom layer, we have user jobs. At the next layer, we have instances of cluster manager that manage user jobs. However, now the question is who manages this second layer? Well, we have another layer whose only job is to manage the instances in the layer below. But now, of course, who manages the top layer? In the top layer, we have two cluster manager instances and they manage themselves. So as long as at least one of the instances is healthy, the whole system can recover. In case both instances aren't healthy, then we have dedicated tools that allow us to bootstrap one of the instances and recover the whole system. All right, let's talk about the evaluation a bit. One question we tried to answer is, do developers actually trust fully automated deployments? And here we see a graph of adoption rate of deployment schedules across all types of services. We have regular services, large services, ML services. Here, continuous means that the service gets deployed as soon as the new inputs are available. On the other hand, manual validation means that there's still some kind of human validation that needs to happen as part of the pipeline execution, maybe like going through logs or dashboards trying to find some failures. As can be seen, for regular services, only about 3.5% of pipelines need this manual validation, which means that over 96% of regular services trust in fully automated deployments. For large services, this manual validation is about 30%, which means that over 70% of our largest and most complex services that serve billions of users have a full trust in automated deployments. Another question we try to answer is, how effective are conveyor deployment safety mechanism? And here we have a front function as a service again, which utilizes task control to ad dynamically adjust the speed of deployment to continuously deploy every three hours over more than half a million machines. At the top figure, we see a request rate to the service in a particular region 
we have, see the percentage of the jobs that are being updated. And at the bottom figure, we see the average CPU utilization. As can be seen, the, when the load is high, the updates are slower. And this enables us to stay steady below some threshold for the average CPU utilization. To conclude, we demonstrated that a fully automated deployment via a single tool is feasible. And also we presented several novel techniques for in-place updates, analysis of code dependencies, and ML model deployments. Thank you.